Simply speaking, I'm very proud and I'm very honored because the Dr. Honoris Causa is one of the highest awards a university can give, one of the highest appreciations of scientific performance and to be awarded this degree by Carlos Testero is really a very, very big honor. I would say uh, it was quite characteristic that although we were working and still are working along very similar lines, there never has been competition but always cooperation. And I still remember when we started the Huggins Chair project that brought us closer together in 1999. At first, the idea of the sponsoring company Huggins was that all three institutes, Calstadero, Trento, and Vienna, would do more or less the same research work. But within a few months, the specialties of each university had come out, and therefore we focused on different aspects of the project but we were able to bring it together to the final conclusion. Well, my personal research lines are more or less uh, on the boundary between basic research and applied research. Basic research sponsored by funding organizations and applied research sponsored in part directly by the industry, but also by mixed funding from governmental sources and from the industry, uh, which is a funding scheme that in Austria is quite popular and is also comparatively well funded. And this is one of the items or the reasons why uh, cooperation between industry and universities has made very good progress in Austria in the last, let's say, 15 years. And of course, you need both. You need the basic research. You need the applied research also for us for lecturing to get the information from the industry where the trend, the industrial trends go to. But on the other hand, it's also essential for me as a professor to explain to the industry what the universities can do best. Because it's not our job to do routine work, routine analysis for the industry. Their own technicians can do this much better. But what we can do is to think for the industry and, if possible, even before the industry, to find trends, to identify needs before the industry can find that. And that is something I try to do with my group. Well, powder metallurgy opens up chances you do not have with classical metalworking techniques. There are limitations when you look to ingot metallurgy uh, because from the monodynamic viewpoint, you start from equilibrium, and when you have equilibrium, it's very difficult to re-establish an inequilibrium. Powder metallurgy, in contrast, you start from inequilibrium, and it's in your hands how you uh, establish the transformation from inequilibrium to equilibrium by heat treatment, and in which states you stop. That means you have much more chances to establish controlled inequilibrium. And what is really striking for me is that now, when we have the big trend to additive manufacturing, how suddenly the powder experience, the powder metallurgy experience, becomes attractive and highly popular also with institutes, with companies who never had any contact with powder metallurgy. That means it's a sort of revival for powder metallurgy in different focal areas but our experience, uh, the uh, decade-long expertise that had been collected, can be brought to new fruits.